in a world searching for gaming knowledge comes the man, the myth, a legend in his own mind, Critical. Welcome back guys and gals, Critical here, and today I'm bringing you another episode of For the King. Now I'm still not doing a quote unquote let's play, I'm gonna go in deep on the mechanics. The last episode kind of looked generally over a large portion of the game. Today I want to get in the nuances of combat. Get past all this, there's wood smoke. Now it's my turn. I'm not gonna go over movement and the beginning of your turn. I really just wanna talk about combat today. That's what this whole episode is about. And the map, they've given us a, a fair amount of mobs that we should be able to reach. Let's see, and that should bring my... What I'm trying to decide is, yeah, I'm gonna be pulling in this wolf, the imp, and this beastman hunter. And I should get my, my other two that are still in town, should get into the fight as well, let's see. Yes they are, okay. Imps are very wily and they'll attack right away. This is your main combat window. Each tune, every time they have their turn, has a selection of what they can do. Their turn is shown up here. This is the combat timeline. It represents the turn order in combat from right to left. Initiative and reset positions are determined by speed. So the speed of your character determines where they show up on this timeline. So my hunter is gonna go after the imp. The imp is the fastest thing on whole battlefield right now but the hunter is second fastest. The next thing that's going to attack is the wolf, followed by my minstrel, and then the beastman, and finally my blacksmith will attack, followed by the imp again, which is starting round two. Now what I like to do is I like to try to focus on the mob that's going to attack next. And is there anything I can do to stop it? And in this case, no, there's not. The wolf attacks too fast, but my minstrel has an ability that would be able to pause or make the wolf skip its turn. It slows it down. And maybe I'll get a chance to take it out before I can do any damage to my mobs. That's what you always want to be looking at at this point in the game. What can I do to mitigate damage, to lessen the amount of damage the squishies are taking? My blacksmith has the ability to taunt, but she's so slow that ability happens too late in the turn to protect my mobs. It's something that I'll talk about that later when I'm talking about some alternate scenarios, who, who you can have taunt and stuff. But the first thing you want to know is that that's all controlled by speed. What can my hunter actually do? Well, I can flee. Now I can use focus points and I can guarantee that I could flee. And he'll just kind of put his hands up and back away. And if everybody does it, you'll see the the mobs will cheer because they've best us, bested us. But I'm not gonna do that. Nobody on the field right now, none of these mobs have armor. If I was fighting a mob that had a shield or some kind of armor, it would be represented by a shield here and the shield would be blue. If they had magical resistance, it would be another shield and it would be purple, just like your shields, blue and purple. Because there's this wolf doesn't have armor, using a snipe shot doesn't make any sense. It's doing the same amount of damage but has a less chance to actually proc. So I will go ahead and do a standard shot. Now I could use focus to guarantee the shot, but the wolf really isn't worth the focus. Perfect, and I get a critical right off. Uh, wolf gets its attack. Now, the next thing to attack is this beastman. I know I can take the wolf out with, with the next hit. 
there's no reason to attack this wolf right now because it won't attack before my my hunter gets a chance to attack. So I could attack the wolf with my blacksmith or my hunter and stop it from doing any more damage. But this mob hasn't attacked yet. This beastman has not attacked. What I want to do now is try to mitigate his damage, find out some way to either lessen or stop him causing any damage to my team whatsoever. So my minstrel, I can run, I can do an alto, which he plays the tune, and it can ignore resistances and cause damage, or I can use dazzle, which is an attempt to stun. I want to dazzle this mob. I'm going to go ahead and use a single focus point to uh, see if I can get a dazzle. Now I've got an 83% chance of this succeeding. I'll cause three points of damage and dazzle him. Now he's dazed. He drops behind my warrior. Now my warrior has a chance to attack. Unfortunately, it would be nicer if she was doing that earlier in the turn but she wasn't. So what can I do? All right, my warrior can flee, I can taunt. If I taunt, I'm trying to get all the mobs to attack my blacksmith and nothing else. I can do a regular smash attack. Her hammer gives her ability to smash attack. It's her shield that gives her the ability to taunt. If she changes shields and it doesn't have a taunt function on it, she can't taunt. I can smash, which is a single target, or I can do a shockwave attack. A shockwave attack is a splash damage attack and it'll hit all the mobs if I aim in the center or just the right and left. Now this one doesn't matter which one I aim at, I believe. Nope, okay. So it's showing which where the splash damage is gonna go. If I aim at this beastman to do this, this shockwave attack, I'll hit the beastman and I'll splash damage to the wolf. If I aim at the wolf, I can splash damage to everybody. If you have a splash damage character, a character that has that ability, they can hit all mobs, it splashes to the to the other mobs. You don't want your single target characters like your hunter to go after the middle mob. You want them to go after the right or left mobs. That way when a splash character comes up, they can hit all the mobs instead of just hitting two or one if this mob dies. Just things to think about. But today, I'm gonna go ahead and taunt. I'll use one focus, and now I've successively ta taunted the mobs. Now we're back. Now everybody's attacked my blacksmith, who has the best armor of my party, and also has a shield. That's where I want the damage to be focused, is on my blacksmith, nobody else. The wolves get ready to attack. My hunter has an attack available. Go ahead and take the wolf out. Oh, it's painful. Once again, my minstrel is ready to attack. If we look, we'll see the beastman timetable. He's going to attack after the imp, but before anybody else. So I'm going to go ahead I don't really, you know, I'm not gonna use focus this time. I'm just gonna see what happens. Sweet, perfect. Now, I don't really need to be using focus this this turn. This, this combat is really not worth all the focus, but I like to, I, I wanted to use it to show you what you could do with focus, how you can use focus. Let's go ahead and, oh. And, the imp doesn't do a lot of damage, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the beastman instead of trying to taunt. Oh, perfect. Nice. Now, that maneuver steadfast is a blacksmith ability. No other character can have that, only a blacksmith. And that steadfast ability is no matter what the damage amount is coming in, she just negates it her steadfast ability negates it now it's random when that happens percentage chance well, it was pretty good so i can try to dazzle this imp or attack the imp the thing about an imp is it is evasive evade any non-perfect attack 
if I don't get a perfect roll, it just misses an imp because they have so that's one of their special abilities. Let's see what happens. Ah, oh, perfect. And my hunter. Down goes the imp. All right, there's a successful combat. Each character gets some gold experience. And I get to collect some loot off these mobs. In this case, I've collected Hermit Grass. Hermit Grass is really nice for the hunter because it boosts the evasion. Oh, 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 nice. A heavy bow. First first combat, and I get a heavy bow. You know it's going to be a good, a good time. And I'm going to bring her one square back. Now, I have the end turn, automatic end turn, turned off. I do this so that if I reach to the end of my, my movement, it doesn't automatically switch to my other tunes. Because if I get here and something pops up that I want to look at, I can use a focus point by right-clicking on the map and now I've used one focus to get to move again. Because sometimes you'll get to, to the end and then something will pop up and it's something that you actually need. A buff or it's something that you've been looking for and you and you need to get in there because you've got you're short on time. Using a focus point will give you that chance to actually get in there and affect or start a, uh, a fight that you really need to get done in a certain amount of time. And this game is time-based. There's always a, a clock hang, hanging over your head. If I was doing it as an auto shutoff, I could, I'd reach that point and if that thing popped up that I wanted to get to, because things do pop up on the map when you get within enough range, it would automatically switch to the, to the next tune or end the turn completely and we start the next round. That could be bad for me. I might take damage. I might run out of time on a buff that I really need that I, I want to have when I enter someplace or to fix or to solve some kind of puzzle. With having end turn turned automatic end turn turned off, I get to decide when the turn actually ends. In this case, I hit can either hit delete or just click end turn. All right, now it's critical's turn. Let's go ahead and we're gonna try to take on this imp. There's nothing else that's gonna get pulled in this fight. So this should be pretty simple. It's going to be an imp against my three tunes. My three cents, ha! Okay, I'm gonna attempt to ambush the imp just to see if it'll, it'll work. Ah, sweet, I succeeded. So what does the ambush do? First off, an imp is always gonna get the first attack. But because I was able to ambush the imp one, I get my, my guys get the first attack, not the imp. Even though the imp in the timeline should have gotten the first attack, we get one free attack before the imp even has a chance to attack because my hunter's ambush actually work. You ambush them, you surprise them. You also are able to pull them out of combat from anybody else. So if there were surrounding mobs that would have gotten pulled in, if your ambush works, you'll be able to pull them out and nobody else can jump into the fight. If your ambush fails, even if you have initiative, even if you would normally be attacking first, the mobs always get a chance to attack before you do. So it's a gamble. Okay, now I've put on a new bow. My we my weapon is now a, I remember correctly, can I look at it while I'm in this inventory? No, it's not gonna look at me, but it's, it's, I have a new weapon on. So I can still flee, but this weapon has a regular shot. It has a heavy draw, which is a, it's more damage, but it takes more rolls. So this attack right here takes four rolls to get a perfect shot. So it does 10 points of damage. This one takes five rolls and I have more damage, but I have more rolls that could go wrong. So I could, more easily miss. And since an imp requires a perfect hit no matter what, I want to use something that has as much chance to hit the least amount of rolls possible 
means I can't miss one. If I miss a roll against an imp, I automatically fail. Let's see what happens. Oh, I get a perfect right off. Take him out. <laughs> All that talk for, for no action. I haven't missed an imp yet. I was expecting the imps to be my problem. Okay, perfect. This is exactly what I was talking about. I get to the end of my turn. I have no movement points left. But if I wanted to get into the dark cave and try this place out, I need to use a focus point. And I can enter. And I can pull my whole party in there. Now, this was stupid. I am going to die, depending on what I find in here. And no matter what, you cannot back out. Once you're in, you have to finish the dungeon. This this one has three rooms. The last room is like your reward. So the first one I find is a healing fountain. Well, Shadow is probably worse off. So I'll have her drink. And nothing happened, unfortunately. And that's it. Nobody else gets a, a chance. I have a pause before I move to the next room that I can do some stuff. So what I'm going to do is heal up and make sure I'm fully ready for this next room. Now, my chances of survival in this are minimal. All right, I probably, there's no chance of me surviving this. But hey, that's half the fun of it. I'm trying to see which tunes I have here. All right, to even have a chance at getting this done, I'm gonna have to use focus this time. And even with using all my focus, I can't kill this mob outright. But I'm gonna try to do as much damage as I, damage as I possibly can. Oh, sweet. I got a full 15 points of damage on him. It cost all my focus, but it was worth it. Here's exactly what I've been talking about. This mob's a skeleton. He'll do a decent amount of damage, but this guy can set my characters on fire. I need to dazzle him. This guy can't be stunned. This guy can't be stunned. This Chaos Acolyte, he can be stunned. So I'm going to go ahead and use two focus points to ensure that I get a stun thereby delaying his attack. Ouch. And making it so that my guys get to attack first. He has two points of damage. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and try to power down and get this guy down. And I'm going to use my focus to do a splash shockwave attack. Now, this is a guaranteed hit. I'm going to do 10 points of damage to that skeleton, and it'll splash and do damage to both tunes on either side, both mobs. But I'll be taking out this Ghast of Al Argon. Either way, whatever your name is, you're dead. Sweet. Now, it used all my focus to do that, but in this instance, it was worth it. Now, the next thing it's going to attack is this Chaos Acolyte. I'm gonna see if I can take him out with my regular shot. I'd have to get nearly a perfect for it to work. Oh, there we go. God, I'm surprised I'm, I'm actually surviving this. Now my stun isn't gonna work, so the only thing I can do is use my focus. Or excuse me, is just use my auto attack. And perfect. Wow, I cannot believe I survived that attack. Common lock picks. I'll give those to my hunter. A flaming torch. Burning blow. Flaming swing. What you need to know about this is it's breakable. So if you attack and somebody defends and you have a uh and you miss an attack, it can break. And almost always does. Yeah, my I would say. Actually, what I'm facing in here right now, I might actually want to equip this. Yeah, I'll go ahead and equip it with what I'm facing in this dungeon. Now, in this, in here, I should be able to open up my inventory. Ah, I can. And I can 
shift stuff around if I want to. I'm gonna go ahead and give this golden rot to my warrior. I think I have it. I think I'm gonna need it in this next room. I'm gonna have her use her golden rot, golden root, excuse me, and the same thing for shadow. I want Shadow and Miranda to have the ability to use their focus in the next room. His health is pretty low, so I'll go ahead and use this God's Beard. I'm wasting a ton of resources here, guys. Normally I wouldn't do this, but I wanna to try to survive this next room. Oh, ouch. This, this is bad. All right, once again, I am going to, he has no, Focus to use, unfortunately. Eh, I'll go for it anyways. Oh, all, all but one. And he dodged it. See what I mean? It's it's kind of an all or, or nothing sometimes. It was it was almost perfect, and he didn't get any damage from it whatsoever. All right, I'm still getting lucky. This guy's already attacked. It would be a waste to dazzle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do damage. Not a lot, but it's something. I am getting lucky on these dodges, guys. This. Now I don't usually play with a torch. Burning blow will ignite, but he's immune to fire. So fire damage won't do any good, but a flaming swing can hit all the mobs because it's a splash damage attack and could ignite and I could ignite this guy right here. But I'm just gonna go ahead and focus on just him. Cool, I got a good hit on him and he's ignited. All right, who's gonna attack next? I believe it is gonna be this Chaos Acolyte if he lives long enough, well, he'll, he'll live long enough. I'm going to, but these guys are really, these gas or ghosts are horrible. Want to take them out. Nice. Almost. Oh, ho, ho, ho. wow. I am so lucky on these dodges. These characters are blessed. Now, the reason this is working is I'm paying attention to the combat because I'm trying to teach you guys how to do combat right in this game. I'm actually doing it right, which is unusual. I usually am not this good. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this ghost just to make sure he doesn't get another round. She died from the flame attack. This guy is immune to fire. So the weapon I'm using is actually ineffective. And I don't believe I can change weapons in the mid of combat. So what I'm gonna do is taunt and make sure that this ghost is only attacking my blacksmith. Because in this instance, that's what I want to have happen. Oh God. Oh, that was horrible. She encouraged just so we got that in a roll. <laughs> that was horrible. Nice. All right, let's try a standard attack this time. Okay, because I wasn't using a hard draw, even though I missed two of the rolls, I still got some damage. So that's that gamble. You want that 15 points of damage, you better hope you get almost all the rolls correct. I'm gonna try a flame attack. I wanna see if it'll, if it'll do damage. It did do damage, but he's immune to fire. So maybe it was just the regular attack that, that worked. All right, and it looks like all my tunes leveled up, so they all healed up. That was awesome. And I'll have her collect this golden root. Wow, I had no clue I'd, I'd survive that. The only reason I survived it is I used every ability plus the golden root, plus the God's beard to heal my tunes up and make sure I have as much focus as I could as I went to each turn. I also took the time to see who was attacking when and tried to disrupt, mitigate, or burn them down before they got a chance to attack my team. And what's my reward for this? At the end of the cave, I get a chest. I'm telling you, I have never completed the the cave at this low of a level. I Most times I look at it and it says, 
your party might not might not be ready for this and i immediately just run away i never expected to be able to do this this is amazing okay book of lore here's where you get lore books Ooh. I'll have her equip it. Everybody's armor will go up by one. Teleport scroll. scroll. I'll have her collect that. It's nice. And now I exit the dungeon. The whole party got pulled into it, so the whole party is exiting from this area. Well, that's a lot more combat than I expected. I, I didn't think I would see the cave. And I for sure thought I was going to die in the cave and just walk away laughing. But we actually survived. So by using up all my supplies, which that was pretty dumb. I normally wouldn't have done that using up all the supplies. But I was able to complete that dungeon. And by using the tactics that I'm trying to show you, I was able to mitigate as much damage as possible. And let's be honest, my guys were amazing. They were dodging stuff left and right. That was an atypical combat scenario don't take my success at this at the apprentice level at the lowest level the easiest form in this game if this game has an easy mode at all that normally was wouldn't happen that's the first time i've seen every guy every every one of my characters dodge attacks in a single round where everybody was dodging everything i thought for sure they'd all get taken out in the first room but this was an amazing run Hopefully you guys have learned something about For the King about combat. And next episode, all right, guys and gals, I have been Critical. This has been For the King, the combat tutorial. Hopefully you've enjoyed this content. You have a nice day. Bye.